new motor homeowner, going on your first trip, feeling a little bit intimidated about driving this enormous vehicle. I know exactly how you feel. Here are some tips to help. Hey, I'm Kat and welcome to Wandering Bird where we share tips and tricks for motorhomers and campervanners to help you make the most of your time on the road. And today we are tackling driving the big white beast. For most of us, driving a motorhome is going to be the biggest vehicle that we have ever driven. If you are an HGV driver or you're used to driving enormous vehicles, you probably don't need this video because this is for those of us who are brand new very intimidated and just want want to make sure we don't scratch our new pride and joy and i know exactly how you feel because we've had a van for years but i'll be honest my husband has done most of the driving now we've had three vans the first one was under three and a half tons i could have driven it but i was really intimidated so i just kind of let him drive it the second van was over three and a half tons and i can't drive that on my license because i took my test after 1997 so i would have to do a c1 one addition and I'll be honest I didn't do that but then we downsized again and we went back to a van that was under three and a half tons and I was determined that I was going to drive this thing the problem was I was still really intimidated by it but I have made myself go out and go for longer and slightly longer journeys and just build up my confidence because I didn't like the fact that I was intimidated by it. And the other thing that I discovered was that if I am on the insurance as a named driver, which I am, and something happens to my husband, I would be expected to drive the motorhome back or do whatever. The insurance company wouldn't send out a recovery vehicle for that because I'm a named driver. So that's something to bear in mind. If you are a named driver on your policy, you will be expected to drive it and you should be able to do so. So, I am not a driving instructor by any means, but I thought I would share a few things that I have done to just make me feel a little bit more comfortable when I'm driving the van, because I know some people get in the van, they're like, yeah, this is fine, not a problem at all. And others of us need a little hand-holding. <laughs> so if you are feeling nervous, don't worry, you can do this, and here's what helped me. Before I dive in, if you're new to the channel, hi, welcome. We share tips for motorhoming and campervanning, and if you'd like to see more, by all means, hit subscribe. Okay, let's dive in. So the first thing I want to say is your confidence isn't going to grow unless you get out there and actually do it. Now, depending on how supportive your partner, your friend, your family are, you might want to do this on your own or you might want to do this with somebody there to help you. So, so let me get this right, Dad. You're, you're, you're not driving. Um, I, I, I can't go to sleep now. This is normal. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to die. <laughs> we're not, we're doing 20 miles an hour and it feels really fast. We're we're going to die very like, slowly. The... I found the first couple of times I drove, um, it was really helpful to have my husband there, A for more sport, but also as the passenger, he was like, no, you're miles away from that. You can get a bit closer to the curb. Because the van and most motorhomes are, well, they're definitely wider than a car. They're normally about half a meter wider than a standard car, depending on your standard car. It can feel really weird and you naturally kind of drift out. Um, and I often find myself sort of lining up with the middle of the road, which is obviously far too far over. And you have to kind of force yourself to come back to the edge of the road. Now, you can practice this in a car. And if you practice going closer to the curb than you would naturally drive in a car you'll get over that kind of this is too close this is weird feeling so that's something you can definitely do even if you're just driving around your normal car is practice just driving obviously not on the curb um, but just driving closer than you might normally would because in a motorhome you will be closer to the curb be just because of the width of the vehicle in the lane the other thing you can do that really helps is find out a point on the dashboard that lines you up in the middle of the lane now, obviously that will depend a lot on the width of the lane that you're in but on a standard lane find a, a reference point on the dashboard so that you make, can make sure you're in the middle of that lane that really helps because obviously you don't want your wing mirror over one side or the other side because that's going to be dangerous to other road users so make sure you're in the middle of the road and that's why it can be helpful to have somebody with you so they can check your road position whilst you're checking everything else that's going on as you're driving along having said that now I've got that fairly sussed I actually prefer being able to go out and drive around on my own because I find that I can concentrate more on what I'm doing rather than having to worry about anybody else that's in the vehicle with me so make sure you find a balance that's right for you 
The biggest thing to remember, apart from your width, is your height and your length. Now, height, you can't do a whole lot about. Make sure you have a proper sat nav. I can't stress this enough so that you are not faced with a very low bridge and going, oh my goodness, I can't remember exactly how high I am. Make sure you know your height, both in meters and in feet. A lot of people on the drop down in, over the steering wheel on the drop down um, sunscreen. What's it called? Sunblind? The bit that drops down. Sunblind? Anyway, that bit that drops. Sun visor. That was hard work, wasn't it? Um, but on the back of that, you can actually just put a little bit of paper or a sticky note or something that's got your height and your width and your length in both meters and in feet. So that if you do see a sign saying low bridge of whatever in front of you, you can flick it down. Can I fit through that? Yes, I can. And of course, if you are going to a low bridge, pull out into the middle like a big bus or lorry would, because you are a big bus slash lorry. And so you will take up the middle of the low bridge. Remember your height. Same thing applies with low hanging trees. You will become much more aware of low hanging branches and you'll instinctively duck as you go past any. Yeah, you'll be amazed how many of them are around and can be hazardous to your vehicle. So be careful with them. And of course, if you can pull them out, wait till the road coming the other way is clear and then you can pull out and go round them. And the last thing is your length. You will take much bigger turning circles than you are used to in a car. If you imagine coming to a junction, you can't just do that because if you turn then you're going to hit the curb or the pavement on that side. So you have to pull yourself out and then round, which sometimes fairly regularly means you're going to be pulling out onto the opposite side or opposite lane of traffic. So you need to make sure that both ways are properly clear before you do. Keep an extra special eye out for cyclists and motorcyclists who get a bit impatient, especially motorcyclists being one of them, I'm allowed to say this, they can get very impatient and try to overtake you or try to whiz past you as you're pulling out of junctions. Just let people go. Let people do their thing. If it takes an extra five seconds for you to let them go, you will get they're much calmer, much less stressed, and ideally without killing anybody. That's a really good way to arrive. So those are all the things to think about whilst you are driving the vehicle. The other thing to think about, especially if it's your first time and you're gonna to go to a dealership and you have never driven a motorhome before, because most of us buy a motorhome without any form of road test at all. You can actually end up buying your brand new motorhome and it'll be the first time you've ever driven it. So make sure that you take your time. I highly recommend you don't go to the dealer last thing in the day because they are going to be pushing you to get out so they can lock up and clean up and go home. So try and do it either in the morning or in the middle of the day so you've got plenty of time. Make sure you've done your handover, take loads of notes so that you can remember everything that they said because that's all about to go out your head as you are about to drive this thing. Now, take your time to set up your mirrors and set up the back if you've got a reversing camera even better. I would highly recommend you don't bring the entire family with you on your very first trip, perhaps your partner or somebody to help you, but don't bring the kids and everyone else because the noise and the questions and everything is going to make it really difficult for you to concentrate whilst you are driving this beast for the first time. So just give yourself that first trip just to get in there. Um, remember, if it's a manual vehicle and you drive an automatic car, which I do the number of times I have got in our motorhome and gone to drive and I'm like, oh yeah, gears. Yeah, need to remember that. And the other thing as well is the handbrake. The handbrake on the motorhome, the travel on it is like twice what it is in the car. So most of the time I think I put the handbrake down and you set off and there's this enormous beep and it turns out that I hadn't put the handbrake down at all. Okay, why is it beeping at me? I don't know. What's flashing? Nothing's flashing. Handbrake. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> And of course, before you set off, make sure you know where your indicators are, make sure you know how to get into reverse, and make sure you know the speed limits that apply to you as a motorhome. If you're under three and a half tons, it's generally the same as a car, but if you're towing, or if you're over three and a half tons, depending on where you are and what country you're in, the speed limits can be different. So make sure you pay attention to that. A couple of quick tips that have really, really helped me. Remember that you are a much bigger vehicle than you are probably used to in your car. So your braking distances are going to be massive. So make sure that you leave yourself way more time to brake and to slow down than you would otherwise be used to. And of course, when you are driving in adverse weather, especially something like heavy rain, make sure that you are driving at appropriate speeds, much slower than you might normally in a car, just because you are such a bigger vehicle. And the same in high winds, it will affect you more than you're used to. So that can be a bit weird the first time you do it. 
The other thing to do is use your mirrors way more than you would now. Most motorhomes have a double mirror, so you've got your first one, which like a normal mirror, and then you've got the smaller one at the bottom, which shows your blind spots. Use them, use them, and then use them again. The number of times you see things. Now, it can take a little while to judge cars that are coming flying past, but you will get used to that. Just keep using them, and it'll make it much easier when you're pulling in and out. The last tip that I would give is when you're parking, try and park in the direction that you want to pull out of. It's so much easier to pull out of a space than it is to try and reverse out of a space. And there's things coming, you can't always see what's around you. So if you can try and reverse into a space that you can just drive out of it again, it does take a skill and it's so much easier with the reversing camera. So I'd highly recommend getting one of those. But overall, you can definitely do this. There's nothing about driving a motorhome, providing you are legally allowed to drive it, of course, that you can't do. It just takes practice and takes a little bit of confidence and then it takes more practice, but you can do it. Go on, go out right now, right now, go and drive your motorhome. If you're, if you're not normally the driver, go and drive your van, go take it on the block, go, I don't know, take it to a pub, don't drink and drive, um, but just take it somewhere, go and have a little adventure and be the driver, you'll feel so much better. And then come back and drop a comment here and tell me all about it. I wanna hear all about your adventures. I hope you found that video useful. If you did, a thumbs up is always very much appreciated. And if you are new to the channel and you'd like more helpful videos like this, by all means hit subscribe. Thank you as always for your time and I'll see you on the next video.